Hello YouTube, this is my second video in the series and uh, if you haven't watched the first video, I highly recommend you to watch that and I will try to put the video somewhere here or here, okay, in one of these two places. Uh, so just make sure you click on the link and you watch the video before you begin with this. So in the first video, what we covered is we tried to cover uh, the details as to what happens before and uh, while you press the enter key and we covered the various parts of a URL and also uh, uh, how the browser's bar works, okay, the URL bar. Uh, and in this video, we are going to cover what happens after that. The two steps or the two stages which the browser uh, undergoes after you press the under, uh, enter key is basically the first thing that happens is a HSTS thing that we will be covering today. And also there is a DNS query part which will be covered in the next video. Uh, so let's quickly get started with how HSTS works and what HSTS is. Before I get started with a demo or uh, you know something that I can practically show you, uh, I would like to tell you that H HSTS stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol, which is HTTP, uh, with strict transport security. STS stands for strict transport security. All right, uh, and uh, so to explain this, what I will have to do is I will have to pull out a small diagram that I've made and. With that, things will get more clear. So this is basically split into two components. You can ignore the second part for now. Uh, what we will be concentrating on is the first part here, okay? So here on the left side is a small computer, the user or the browser that uh, will be accessing the website. And this is the server which is serving the website. And here is a malicious hacker or an attacker who's trying to do, a, do an attack called as man in the middle attack. Okay, and what is happening here is this particular user is trying to query this server uh, over various protocols, okay? So here we are talking about HTTP and HTTPS. Uh, and obviously HTTPS, uh, the S in the HTTPS stands for secure. So it is hypertext transfer protocol uh, over secure, okay? Or over security, which is a secure protocol, okay? And here what happens is this attacker, he tries to get access to all the packets that this particular user is trying to send to the server. So what we are trying to focus here is that this particular attacker plays a major role in this diagram, okay? And uh, when the user, so basically three things can happen. When this user sends a request to the server, this attacker basically hijacks the request. He can modify the request and then send it to the server, okay? In this case, the server is getting a incorrect request or something which this user has never requested for. The second thing the attacker can do is when the server is returning a response, the attacker can modify it and send it to the server, uh, to the user, sorry. And uh, the, it will appear to the user as if the server has actually sent the response. And the third thing is the attacker cannot do anything like just sit idle there and just drop all the packets. So there is no connection between the user and the server. Okay, and the user feels that the server is down or uh, the server is not responding to its queries. Okay, and uh, because of this, the user can be uh, redirected, you know, uh, or shown some content which uh, is not actually served by the server. So this is a big problem and uh, the security professionals came up with this idea called as public key cryptography. And what they do in that is they actually encrypt and decrypt traffic on the browser and the server side. Okay, so when the user is sending data to the server, it encrypts it and sends it across and the server can decrypt it and encrypt the data when it is coming back to the user. Okay, in this way, we avoid the attacker being able to intercept the requests and, you know, modify it and send it across because the attacker doesn't really have the key to this particular encryption. Uh, we will, as I said before, we will be covering more into depth of HTTP and HTTPS in the later videos. So you do not really have to worry about all of that right now. Uh, here we encounter one more problem. So let's say the user wants to visit a new website called aditya.com or something like that. Uh, and let's say the server doesn't support HTTPS. It is listening only on port 80. So in this case, what happens is the user will try to connect over HTTPS and it fails. So the user will never be able to access the website. So instead of that, what happens is by default, when you try to visit any website, it goes over HTTP. And then there are various things that happen uh, in the headers and the responses, which convert the website uh, traffic for the further requests into HTTPS. Okay, so let us quickly see your demo and try to understand what I was trying to talk about here, uh, what we mean by HTTP and HTTPS and all of that. 
let me open a new window and here let me go to google.com and before i hit enter let me open inspect element here and go to the network tab okay and when i hit enter you can see a couple of requests and responses being exchanged between my browser and the server but what is of the most importance to us is the first two things which happen here okay so if you see the request url that i had uh, queried is a http request because by default as i uh, told that all the requests go over http first and if you see i search for google.com okay i tried visiting google.com okay and what is important is the google.com server gives back a response header okay a response header and also a response body uh, okay and the response header contains something called as a location okay and this is pointing to http www.google.com okay and if you also see it is also giving you a status code okay which is 301 and what 301 means is it is asking us or our browser to redirect the website okay and the redirection should happen to this particular url which is http www.google.com okay so if we look at the next request that our browser makes it makes to www.google.com over http because uh, the previous response from google.com asked us to go to this particular website okay and what google.com does is it again sends a 302 redirect and this time the location that it is trying to set is https www.google.com okay and uh, what it is trying to do is it is trying to redirect you over https and the reason uh, these websites first redirect you to www and then to their uh, https uh, protocol is because uh, they try to apply this particular SSL cert to every subdomain under star.www.google.com and not star.google.com because they might have a few subdomains which you know uh, do not support uh, SSL and that's the reason they first redirect you to www and after that every subdomain of www is over HTTPS and that's the reason they do this otherwise you should also be able to see a few websites which skip this step and which directly redirect you to uh, HTTPS www.whateverwebsite.com okay you should be able to see that as well okay so this is quite interesting so if you see uh, you're finally getting redirected and your browser makes another request over HTTPS and uh, this basically gets a 200 okay response and you basically get you do not get any other location here okay and what you can see is this particular uh, response is important to us which is strict transport security and the max age uh, stands for how long this particular um, session should be uh, you know uh, res uh, respected for example if you look at this this is in terms of seconds so if you uh, i think it should come to about a year or so when you divide it i'm not really sure you can do the math okay and what happens is in the future whenever you try to go to www.google.com it always redirects to https without these two steps happening okay and uh, this max age is respected because of that so let us give that a try and see if that actually works okay let me go to www.google.com okay and if you see the first request goes over https itself sorry uh, this is the request i'm really sorry uh, this is the request and it uh, uh, respects the rule that we saw before it is always going to choose https as soon as you hit www.google.com because it is saved in your browser okay so this is how the strict transport security works uh, now the problem as you saw is the first two requests which were made to google.com were sent on you know uh, the http protocol so what uh, the solution to that was uh, something called as a preload list okay let us have a look at a preload list how it looks like yeah, here is the mozilla firefox's default uh, preload list so let me just take an entry from here open a new private window and before i hit enter let me open inspect element go to the network tab and then let's press enter okay so this is a very simple website which just gives a response saying this is what you're visiting okay and if you notice uh, there are only two requests sent here the first is a get call to uh, 0-24.com and if you notice this is directly sent over https okay there was no query made over http at all okay so this is very important and the reason this happened is because uh, you can also see this in the response header 
and this is what I was talking about the preload uh, tag okay any website which is in the preload list of the STS in your particular browser gets this particular has to get this particular response from the server okay that's how your browser knows to always use HTTPS uh, whenever querying these kind of websites and also as I said the include subdomains is present so any subdomain that I visit which is start.0-24.com all of it will always be on HTTPS okay I hope this is clear okay so now the question is how do you get your website listed into this particular list how do you make sure all your users are by default coming over HTTPS and for that there is something known as a public re repository of your HSTS preload and uh, all you have to do is you have to enter your domain name here and you know check if uh, it is eligible for the HSTS preload list and once you enroll it here it uh, you can never guarantee when it will go to each of the browsers because it is sent over each of the updates to the browser so every update will also get a set of new preload lists and the preload lists that have to be excluded uh, into the browser and there are also a few requirements that you can go through before you submit your a website into this HSTS preload and then you will get a better idea as to how to make your website more uh, HSTS compatible. So that is all I had for this HSTS video. Uh, I hope you really have something to take away from the video and please do like, share and subscribe to my channel uh, and feel free to comment below with all your questions and I will try to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Uh, the next video will obviously be on the DNS aspect as I mentioned in the starting of this video. Uh, so see you all in the next video.